Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. We're glad you're here. As you've seen on the news, Israel has been attacked. In fact, the more appropriate words would be Israel has been invaded. But I want you to understand this video is not just an Israeli thing. We're going to be getting into something far more implicating and the U.S. is going to get involved. In fact, we're going to see you and me having ramifications because of this whole situation. All right, first off, some interesting point to look at. Biden, uh, Blinken, the Pentagon have all said, we side with Israel, which is really interesting. It, to me, it seems more like a guilt plea than anything else for the fact that, I mean, at the very least, they left all that weaponry in Afghanistan, which falls into the hand of the same type of organization and terrorists that basically carried out this attack. Now, understand that fell into the hands of ISIS in Afghanistan, and Hamas is the one that attacked Israel, two different groups. And those groups, by the way, absolutely hate one another. They despise one another, but they do share one thing in common that's very simple, is they hate Israel. And therefore, I could see some weaponry exchange between the two, but as we'll see in the video, that doesn't, doesn't necessarily have to be the case because this attack that was carried out, I'll show you some implications as far as it came from. In fact, what we're talking about specifically is Iran. Iran has notoriously supplied all kinds of things to Hamas. By the way, not just missile parts, not just blueprints and technology, but upwards of $100 million a year coming from Iran to supply the stuff to Hamas to carry out terrorist stuff. This is not speculation. This was actually put out by Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera, which is actually an Arabic uh, news agency, said this is absolutely true. So this is not simply just rhetoric. But even more to getting to the point of how it's going to affect us. Out of all the countries to lend support to Israel, and we've seen this all over the world now, all the countries putting up Israeli flags, one of them is Ukraine. And they didn't simply just put up Israeli flags. It's interesting how Israel has not helped Ukraine in this situation, but Ukraine is offering help to Israel. I mean, I really wonder, is this just a political gesture? Because how much could they really help considering Ukraine has their hands full as it is, don't they? But they said, you know what? We need to stand together in this situation and we want to help as much as we can. Why is that? It's actually really simple because when you look at Russia attacking Ukraine and we look at Iran supplying Hamas to attack Israel, Russia and Iran are allies. In fact, we've seen a lot of drone attacks, explosive drones coming from Russia into Ukraine were supplied by Iran. They are allies. Now, the allies we talk about specifically is, of course, BRICS. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. But even more so, what we've seen are leadership from Hamas going to Russia recently getting training, getting schematics, et cetera. Russia is one of the things, along with Iran, helping Hamas do what they need to to carry out those terrorist, terrorist strikes. But I want you to understand that the implications of this are far worse. It goes a lot deeper. Because beside Iran and Russia, we know where Iran and Russia stand, especially Iran, you know what I'm saying? Now, they've literally said they want to obliterate Israel. They want to obliterate America. They have no concern for us at all. Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates are also now part of BRICS. So as we're seeing a lot of Middle East countries joining BRICS, we're seeing, of course, the implications going deeper when it comes to Israel being attacked. Now, what's funny, not how funny, but interesting about this is both UAE, United Arab Emirates, and Saudi Arabia have actually been warming up to Israel. They've been coming closer with them and actually trying to form peace treaties out of all countries. China has actually been brokering these peace treaties. And because of these attacks, Saudi Arabia is now trying to de-escalate the situation. When did you ever see Middle East countries trying to de-escalate attacks? But understand, their meaning for this, to de-escalate it, is not really being advantageous to Israel because the damage has already been done to Israel is still continuing to Israel as we see the Hamas terrorists coming in and killing people, destroying stuff, sending tons and tons of rockets and everything into Israel but also taking women and children captive back into the Palestinian territories. And as Israel is absolutely ramping up soldiers, calling up reservists, they're going in. They're going into Palestine to do this. And I understand Saudi is trying to de-escalate it, but that's kind of like saying, you know what, this country bombed this one. Oh, you know, you need to remain calm. They just got bombed and targeting civilians, women and children. Now, when Hamas attacked, they didn't attack some of the government infrastructure. Instead, they, they, they attacked the uh, Israeli kibbutz. 
Kibbutz are, by the way, as preppers, we should really try to uh, latch onto this. A kibbutz, if you didn't know, isn't just a neighborhood, but it's an agrarian-based neighborhood where all the people in the neighborhood share farm space and actually grow food for each other. And, you know, if you actually want to share in it, you actually have to help grow. What an amazing concept that we really could learn from. But that's actually the locations they went into, even broke up Sukkot parties, you know, Sukkot being the last holiday um, that basically it's a day of rest, and they went in and actually massacred a lot of people in these specific parties and, again, took a lot of hostages. But back to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is interesting when it comes to this, and this is what's going to start implying the U.S., because when we talk about political negotiations, Saudi Arabia has always had a deal with the United States was, you know, we'll sell us oil, make them ridiculously rich, but the United States will send forces into the Gulf region to help protect Saudi Arabia. And as of late, in the last few years, that's completely changed where we still want the oil, even though we have an administration right now trying to get us off oil and gasoline without having the military presence. And Saudi Arabia doesn't like this too much. So it makes sense, politically speaking, why Saudi Arabia would join BRICS. They want to be protected. And even though they do have their own army, their own tanks and such, you know, using the United States or now Russia to be able to protect them is to their advantage. And Saudi Arabia joined BRICS. Iran has joined BRICS. Russia and China are part of this political spectrum. And when you look at this line being forged with BRICS, we see United States, Ukraine, which is bleeding United States dry, and Israel on the other side. So we've talked about this before, how battle lines are being drawn. But again, there's more to it than this. And I want to show you when you talk about Saudi Arabia, we're seeing a culture clash. The king of Saudi Arabia still sees Israel as being that nasty nuisance threat that they want to eliminate. However, the younger generation, the crown prince that's coming up, you know, he's more indifferent toward Israel. Take it or leave it. I don't really care about dad and what he thinks as far as annihilating Israel. He just wants to grow his kingdom and actually have it uh, come to be once he takes out over. But the thing is, when it comes to Saudi Arabia, they love BRICS and they totally want to keep negotiations on the table. And since they this attack, this is now bringing ev everything into jeopardy. We're seeing turmoil returning to the Middle East just when things started to look pretty peaceful. And by the way, we'll talk about this in a minute. This was not just a terrorist attack. This is a very well-orchestrated, coordinated attack going into Israel doing what they believed was on the right. Targeting women and children, taking them captives, which will probably be taken off as slaves, is never right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So the whole thing with Israel, we've seen relative peace. I say that word very carefully because we haven't seen peace at all, have we? We, we wait a year or two and see tons of rockets and attacks. Wait a year or two, tons of rockets and attacks. But for far more than this, we haven't seen a major attack as far as like armies moving in with a war since 50 years ago, 1973. And when that happened, same thing, they actually attacked on Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, if you didn't know, is the Day of Atonement. It is a day of rest. And they took advantage saying, oh, Israel won't protect himself on that day. And they attacked. And now the same thing, we're looking at the last day of Sukkot, is also a day of rest too. And they, it's, it's no coincidence that literally exactly 50 years later and a few days, another day of rest, they attack again. So the ramifications that took place back in the 70s in 1973, this is the action that led to the oil crunch. You remember this? How many you were alive back then, saw this oil crunch, or at least read about it? But... You know, we have these giant, massive American tugboat cars, and that's all we drove. Or, you know, remember the 70s cars? They're huge. You get a whole fit, two families in those things. And they were gas guzzlers. Gas was cheap, like 50 some cents a gallon. And then suddenly an oil crunch. And it wasn't just random. Israel was attacked on Yom Kippur. Nixon backed Israel, sent them over $2 billion in aid. And because of OPEC, they said, you know what? We're not selling you the oil anymore. So they stopped. Prices went through the roof major shortages, huge lines at the pump. And now 50 years later, we're seeing in a lot of ways, everything happening again. Because think about this, with that oil embargo in the 70s, gas prices went up 43%. And you're think, oh my gosh, 43% now, but listen to this. In the last couple of years, our gas prices have already gone up 49%. Could you imagine because of this, this whole situation where no more gas coming to the United States from these countries, any BRIC countries at all, we're already heading in that direction. And now we can see 49% could literally just level the whole country, another 49% that is. All right, so me and my family, without even being said, we stand with Israel. Me and my family, we are Israel. We're part of this. But because of this terrorist invasion on a sovereign country, 
the whole world is literally one step closer to World War III because World War II was not simply just this country. In this country, they call it a world war for a reason. So many countries coming into the battles and taking place. This is just one more massive fire popping up. And Netanyahu rightly said, we're at war. This is not an operation, but absolute war. And wars don't end nicely, let me put it that way. So at the very least, we're going to see, at the very least, gas prices going up. And just when we get to the point where, you know what, we can't go much higher, they're going to go much higher because of this, and we're going to be filling at the pump. Obviously, the ramification, ramifications for that alone are much worse. Food, shipping, truck, transport, all those things in the United States are going to come even more to a halt. Prices going up even more in the grocery stores and shortages. We have talk about that all the time, don't we? But the whole implications that we see BRICS, Again, even aligning in situations, calling other countries who stand with the U.S. are being attacked. And that's not stopping with the U.S. Because understand, there's places all over the United States because of this at a higher alert, including me and my family. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for, at the very least, gas prices to go way over $4 because of this or even more so, World War III coming into play? Because that's what I see. And as a prepping channel, we need to continue to prep. Prep, my friends, and be ready for this. Stock as much food and water ammo, whatever you need to, to get ready for what's coming. Because unfortunately, a lot of things are coming and it is just a matter of time.